Okay, so now that we have our final render here, uh, what we're going to do is uh, bring it uh, to Photoshop and try to reach uh, this level. So, uh, what we're going to do is uh, go to our file and import uh, both background and render into Photoshop. So, I'm going back in my folder and I'm selecting my uh, render, my final render, open with the Adobe Photoshop CS5. So, uh, uh, as you can see, it's a kind of a big difference between the raw render and the post production render. And suddenly, uh, by watching these two images and comparing them, uh, this 20% uh, that I assigned to post production uh, uh, seems real. So, some renders need more post production than others. Some renders uh, basically do not need any post production, but uh, Photoshop always helps, so uh, let's get started. I'm going to select uh, the selection tool and I'm going to bring the landscape uh, into my render, just like this. I'm going to close the uh, background image because I already have a copy here in my render and then I'm going to um, scale it by holding the control key and the T key on my keyboard. Uh, by making that, uh, I select uh, the layer and by using these grids, I can scale it. If I use the shift key on my keyboard, I keep the proportion. So I'm just scaling it a little bit and I'm moving it to this side. What I want to do is I want to bring uh, this layer behind my render and now I'm looking for the horizon line. Uh, now the horizon line here on my render should be around here, so that's why I am uh, I'm not putting the, the background like this or like this. I'm trying to make it match with the horizontal line. Uh, try to look uh, for the Im imaginary vanishing point and the horizontal line, and that would that will always help you. Um, so I'm thinking that this should be something like this. Now, I have this empty space. Uh, basically, all of this is empty, and this is the great thing of saving a uh, final render with PNG instead of JPEG that we don't have a background and we get to edit uh, backgrounds much easier. So what I'm going to do to fill this space is use the clone stamp. So I make sure that I'm selecting the background uh, layer and I go to, to the clone stamp tool and this is basically what it does. If I'm uh, using the block magus, uh, I won't have the preview of the size of the brush. Uh, so I'm making sure that I don't have it on. So I'm using the Alt key on my keyboard to select a sample and the clone stamp basically just clones it. As you can see I'm just cloning. So I'm selecting a different part so it doesn't look so uh, tiled and I'm making this like this. Now this is complete and what I want to do is I want to make sure uh, that it looks realistic. Again talking about the horizontal line and I'm uh, kind of having the feeling that it should be a little bit more down and just a little so it's okay so the next thing I want to do is I want to make the illumination from my background match with the illumination of the interior so uh, one thing that I always do is always uh, select my render and go to image and select these three options if I don't like them I can always go back with ctrl C so I'm going to hit automatic tone and you can see how it's changed now if I don't like it, I can go back with Ctrl C. Sometimes uh, I don't like them, and I just don't use them because, uh, well, that's that's the way I work. So I'm gonna try with the automatic contrast and automatic color. And you see, the last one I didn't like it, so I'm going to use Ctrl C to dismiss it. Now, the next thing I want to do, I want to improve a little bit the illumination of the render. So I'm gonna go to Image Adjustments and uh, play a little bit with the brightness and contrast. We could use uh, either one of these options here, but brightness and contrast is like the easiest one because we just have to play with these two um, values. So I'm increasing a little bit contrast and increasing a little bit the brightness. Now, what's wrong with the render? Um, the scene is too bright for this exterior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the background uh, image and I'm going to go to image adjustments and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to brightness and contrast and I'm going to increase the brightness until it looks uh, like 
the illumination be like it's actually illuminating my scene and I'm doing that uh, by moving this little arrow from one side and uh, to the other and I'm not actually looking at this while I move it I'm just uh, focusing my side here so I don't care about the values I'm just looking for the most realistic aspect how does it look more realistic that's what I'm always uh, asking to myself when I'm with Photoshop so I think it should be something like this and I can play a little bit with the contrast and that's it now I'm gonna hit OK now there's a little thing here that I don't like uh, I think that it's too green the sky is too green so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna go to image adjustments and replace color uh, what this does it's we select if we select a color uh, we can replace it for example I'm gonna select the green and if I play with the tolerance I can as you can see here uh, change uh, and edit them uh, change the saturation etc but I want to edit the blue so I'm gonna select uh, uh, basically the blue and play with it uh, I'm gonna increase a little bit the tolerance and I'm going to make it a little more blue and I'm going to make it a little brighter because uh, that's how the sky looks like here where I am you're gonna have to make um, maybe different stuff but uh, right here where I am and uh, this is the closest to reality so I'm gonna hit okay 